Welcome back to the podcast again. And today we are joined by the wonderful Mira Claudia. Mira is a life liberation coach and founder of Her Tribe Community and Events for Women. Mira supports coaches. Mira supports and coaches women to prioritize themselves and rediscover greater self-confidence to show up as themselves unapologetically. She lives by the practices that self-care is not selfish, it's necessary, especially as mothers. And when a woman truly heals, has greater self-confidence and prioritizes herself, she gives back tenfold to her children, family and community. As women, no matter if we birth children or not, we are all raising the next generation. And when we struggle, so do our children. So let's give a warm welcome to Mira for joining us today. Thanks for being here, Mira. Thank you for having me. Um, I can see you're doing some amazing work with women. So please tell us about your journey and how you got to do what you do now. Well, thank you so much. It's actually such a great question I was thinking back and really I think this first started when I uh, in my 20s I was working in a gym at the time and look I was a young 20 year old I had a lot of the issues that 20 year old 20 year olds have highly self-critical wanting to fit in and I found myself working in a gym and I noticed that, you know, we had women coming in as clients and no matter kind of how much that they were exercising, uh, they just, you got a sense that it was never quite enough, that they never felt like they could really truly achieve their goals. Or I was starting to witness older women, um, you know, that I wasn't a mother at the time, but really struggled to fit time in for themselves. Fast forward five years or thereabouts, and I became a mother myself. Um, I was juggling motherhood, I had a corporate role and my ex-husband and I had a gym and I saw the same sorts of patterns that happened. We had a lot of female mm -hmm. clients and again, I just saw and experienced myself this guilt that we have around looking after ourselves. And I, I'm not going to say I was unhappy, but I definitely do not have the level, didn't have the fulfillment that you know I've since had in these last few years. And I, I found that I really struggled, you know, this expectation that society has and that we can place on ourselves as women to do it all, all the time, doing it well, looking a certain way, children happy, husband happy, business running on track. And I found that pressure incredibly hard and I felt like it was just life was a struggle a lot of the time. And, you know, I will say that, you know, I'm, I'm not going to criticise myself and say I was a bad parent, but I definitely look back and see how much my internal struggle was impacting how I was showing up for my children. Um, so I guess my, my driver to work specifically was for women was that I recognised through my own experience and through the clients that we had in our business at the time that as mums, uh, as women, uh, we, we really do struggle to take care of ourselves and put our needs first. And I really wanted to change that. And I, and I had to change that at the end of my marriage. Uh, so, you know, it's, it became necessary for me, but it was also something that I recognised that I wanted to help other women do because I don't think we're meant to struggle in this lifetime. And when we do, as you shared at the start I do feel like our our children and our family struggle with us when we're struggling yeah and I, I think I experience that with my clients as well they come to me and they're running so hard that they've got the job they've got the family um you know they may have pets that they look after or uh, elderly parents or the school they're doing stuff in the school community and it's just one thing on top of another on top of another on top of another so it's not just at home with the children and the husband or the children and the partner. Um, it's the sports and then it's the school want you to do things and you have to volunteer in the canteen. And, and yeah. if you're engaged in part of all of that and, and you've got a job and you've got all these other commitments, looking after ourselves and caring for ourselves comes last. We fall into bed at night exhausted. Mm -hmm. And for those women that don't have children, um, 
it's just as demanding on them because the expectation then is that they work harder or that they can do things for their their broader family and it's the same result with or without children you fall into bed yeah. you're exhausted at the end of the night but you've done everything for everyone else mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, for me, it wasn't until the end of my marriage, which, you know, we'll probably get to, but that I realized how much I had just become the roles that I play for everybody else. And I had a real loss of a sense of self. And in all honesty, you know, I, I became a parent in my mid twenties and I probably didn't fully truly understand who I was then and what was really important to me and what my, my value was in the world. And then add the roles that I began playing as mother and wife, co-business owner, um, ex-person out in the community. Um, and so when a lot of that changed, I found myself going, I don't really know who I am anymore. And I think this doesn't just happen at the end of a marriage. You know, mothers, we go through this transition um, where we've been women and we've maybe had a particular career or we've been in work and then the transition through motherhood. And if we take a step back out of, um, corporate for a while or, or into different roles you know we can lose a sense of what are we actually what are we here for and yes I'm a mother but what else is there you know and that that can be a really um, challenging place to sit and possibly not one that we acknowledge um, you know maybe until some really big challenges happen in life yeah yeah I've heard that again from clients as well that, you know, I'm a mum, but then when the kids go to kinder or they go to school or when they get to high school and then they leave home and then, well, what am I now? Like, because I've invested Correct. all of me in being the best yes. that I can to give them yeah. every opportunity, but in the process I've lost myself. So I work with clients to help them reconnect with self and find self. And it's, it's such a wonderful thing to see people go through that metamorphosis of finding themselves again. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be at, at a big turning point if we can start doing self-care and looking after ourselves and reconnecting with self and having that energy exactly as you said uh, in your mm -hmm. bio that we are better for those around us when we do look after ourselves. But there's yes, a absolutely. Being selfish, but it's not being selfish. <laughs> <laughs> that's right and it, it's even that it, we either think it's kind of selfish and um or we think our oh, self-care it's just like having a bath and you know like like is that really going to do much for me um or you know we kind of we don't value there's not not much value placed on those sorts of things because they don't necessarily produce an outcome and in i guess my, my vision of society at the moment is, is we're really outcome driven. Um, we need to see that we've had success or an outcome for what we do or our time. And so often self-care, um, the things that we do that are, you know, taking time out, slowing down, are not really seen as value. Um, and that's the narrative that I want to, you know, change for women is that actually the time that you take out and invest in that, you actually get back tenfold, not just for yourself, but other areas of life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That recharging. It's like trying to drive a car that's on empty, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, you know, we get out and push the car rather than stopping and filling ourselves up. We just keep pushing through, pushing through. And how many times have we heard, oh, we just got to push through. But mm -hmm. taking that time to stop and recharge is so vitally important. So yeah. you are creating some amazing programs and workshops. What led you to jump out of corporate? You said that you started in corporate. What led you to jump out of corporate and start your own business? Because that's a pretty big step. Yeah, look, um, it, it was pretty massive, but I do, it kind of felt organic as well. Um, you know, and I know that's a bit of a buzzword, but I guess really the major turning point or the pivotal point for where I am now was the end of my divorce. And that was in 2017, mid 2017, sorry, the end of the marriage. And look, it was a complete life upside down moment. Um, one week we... We're about to build a house together. You know, we'd moved out of our um, property that we'd owned. We were 
um, planning to build. We had a business together, two children, and literally in a matter of a week, the relationship was over. And it it was it's like the the rug of life had been pulled out from under me, and I completely hit rock bottom. Um, and through the next sort of six to twelve months, were some of the hardest months and that I've experienced in life. Um, and as I touched on before, I kind of had this realization that, you know, this life path that we were heading down was no more. You know, the the family, yeah. the way we were living, the lifestyle, the business, um, and I felt incredibly incredibly isolated. Also, very very lost. Um, and I had. I enjoyed the work that I did, but it really didn't truly light me up. Um, and I'd always felt, and this had been before children, that there was more, that I had more that I wanted to do. And I was, I've been, I guess, a person driven to have purpose. And I know that's a bit of a word as well that feels like an, something almost intangible. But it was really that life upside down moment that I guess created this complete another change where I had the opportunity to make a change and there was something that clicked for me about six months after the separation so still while I'm pretty in a lot of grief and emotion that I decided that the end of my marriage was not going to ruin me and that you know I would make this situation work for me as opposed to against me. And so I jumped into study into interior design, which sounds completely left of field, but it was something that I'd always wanted to do. And I thought, okay, this is the time. And it was really, truly through that study that um, I happened to get exposed to something called the Gallup Strength Test, um, which showed me my innate strengths. And I had some um, career counseling at the time which didn't show me anything I didn't already know, but it helped bring to my attention actually what I'm really good at. And, you know, the, over the next couple of years, um, as I started to really claim and own what I was good at, which fundamentally is talking, like <laughs> it, but I also, I, I have a real gift for seeing the potential in other people and being able to communicate and engage in a way that really helps them. Mm. It was almost like the dominoes started to line up. I saw how I'd had this interest and I'd actually enrolled to do psychology before I had children and I stopped because um, I would fell pregnant. But, you know, in my corporate role, um, coaching became possibility and we were doing coaching in the corporate setting so I saw how my strengths and talents were going to be aligning in this direction and I guess you know coaching was how I was doing coaching I'd seen how I'd been coaching in different ways through roles in the past anyway and it all just kept evolving um, and I I think it was in 2020 through the lockdowns where we all experienced a lot of isolation in um, Melbourne and and in the world that what really landed for me was how important community was and so my business started out as me running women's circles um, under my brand Her Tribe and that's what started in early 2021 with the intention that I would eventually privately coach but you know Honestly, I, I wasn't in my confidence as a coach at that point. So her <laughs> was a really good first step for me to start running spaces for women, um, circles or events for women, again, just to help women come and choose themselves. Um, for me to be able to share my, my strategies and my tips to how I had been managing um, as a single parent, juggling study, juggling work, um, all the things, and, you know, gifting over those things that had really worked for me uh, and also, you know, bringing together the idea of community and connection, which is so incredibly important for women. And we really lost that in 2020. So that's kind of it in a nutshell, um, bounced around a little bit, but it was really that um, that big life upside down moment that gave me the opportunity. And that's how I saw it after some time. It was an opportunity 
and I, I made a conscious decision that that ending was going to be an opportunity as opposed to continue to impact my life going forward. Yeah, and that's a really important thing that we can go through traumatic events in our life um, and they're, they're awful when they happen to us at the time. But in hindsight, we can look back and say that, well, if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be here. Or I wouldn't see things the way I see them. So it changes. Those traumatic events can change our view on the world and can also allow us to open up and look at things differently. Um, and totally. that opportunity. And, and going and exploring yourself, like if if your marriage hadn't have broken down and ended, then who knows where you'd be, probably still running a gym and living in a house. But, um, <laughs> but now that you're impacting so many other people's lives through your women's circles and your coaching programs that you offer and that you run and helping others to be able to navigate through that fog of those uh, times when relationships do break down that well, you just when you're in the middle of a trauma you can't see or think or process clearly and having someone yep. help you unpack it and then be able to see with a little bit more clarity around well what does the future hold because sometimes we can't even see that far in advance when we're in the middle of it uh, look absolutely and you know I I, I do see um, there's this a kind of general story and narrative about being a single parent. And that can be, there's, there's just, just like level of guilt and shame. And that's actually how I started on social media. I just thought, no, we've got to talk about the opposite. There is benefits to um, this experience. Um, you know, again, I guess this is probably my ethos is, you know, truly believing there is opportunity in every challenge for us and it's that we get the chance to actually take that. Um, however, on your own, that can be very hard. Um, and I, you know, I felt very isolated. Um, I didn't have anyone going through separation at the time. I'd been a mum for the first time and not really having many friends going through motherhood at the time. And then lo and behold, divorce happened. And I was again, you know, in that situation where I really didn't have other people around me. And in speaking to other women that have gone through separation, particularly with children, they mirror this same experience, this feeling of isolation, their friendships all change. And so part of the programs that I run, particularly around this topic is group programs because it gives women the ability to come together and share in their experience and feel like they're less alone in in that particular phase of life whilst also empowering them and inspiring them that this massive life change does not need to be the end it's actually just the beginning and they have the option to thrive as opposed to just survive or just get by you know, even as a single parent, which can be seen as a really limiting experience for a lot of women. Yeah, yeah. So you said that you uh, became a mum in your mid-20s. If you could go back and give your 21-year-old self a piece of advice, what would that be? <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that, it's like, oh, that wasn't actually that, that much earlier to when I did become a mum. Look, it's really simple. I, I thought about this and the simple advice is embrace your curls and spend time getting to know yourself. So my hair is, I guess, an example of embracing yourself as you are because, you know, I'm kind of known for my curls now. Um, I get so many questions about them and yet I truly have only properly embraced them since the end of my marriage. Um, you know, before then my hair, I'd either straighten it or it would be up, but I really rejected it. I didn't really love it. And in truth, it's because it wasn't like everybody else. You know, I wanted the straight hair. I wanted what I saw out there in this media and social media. And yet now it's such a part of who I am and it really reflects to me the little girl that for a long time I'd lost touch with. And that was this little girl that loved to dance. She loved to play. She was called a chatterbox. You know, she was a talker. She was a performer. Um, and so, you know, my hair is, I guess, a representation of something that we often 
reject within ourselves to be liked, to fit in. And yet when we embrace our true elements of us, where, you know, we are showing up in a vibrance that you can't bottle, yeah. can't pick up off the shelf, you can't get from colouring your hair or changing it. Um, so, yeah, that that's that's the advice to the 21-year-old, Mira. <laughs> Embrace your curls. I love that. So with your new role as a coach, what is a common myth about what you do in coaching? Look, I, I think because of the area that I specialise in, which is, I guess, working with women around life change, a lot of, um, say, going through a separation, our immediate thought is that we go and see a psychologist. And by no means am I suggesting that, that there's not a place for that type of therapy. But I think there is this assumption that coaching is just for people in business or sport, that coaching isn't for emotional challenges, and that I really need to know what I need before I start with a coach. So there are three, I guess, myths I want to debust. So coaching is for all areas of life and for all times of life. I've had coaching at different times in my life. Um, coaching is forward facing. So uh, different types of therapies, Talk therapy can really be about the problem right now, whereas coaching is about moving forward. Um, and absolutely, coaching can help with emotional challenges, um, depending on the style of coach that there is. And lastly, a great coach helps you get the clarity um, through asking really great, great questions to help you discover what it is that you need and the steps to take. So you don't need to know a certain amount necessarily before you start. The one piece of advice that I do have is that, you know, when considering coaching, it's working with someone that you really resonate with, that there's something in their story, in what they share that really speaks to you on a deep level um, that you feel that you can relate to or that you can trust um, because the coaching client relationship is um, somewhat intimate and your coach is like your biggest cheerleader in a way. So, you know, you want to have that resonance um, with, with them. So definitely it's not, um, it's not just for business and, and or for a sport. You know, it, coaching can be in different areas of our lives. Absolutely. And coaching is exactly everything that you've just said. It's forward focused. It's help the coach is there to help you get the clarity. And most importantly, connecting with a coach that resonates with you and that you can trust is absolutely vital that you find the person that's right for you. So I recommend to people that call me, I say, look, if, if you know, if I'm not the right person for you, there'll be someone out there who will be. So please go and find that person and interview them I tell them go and have a look on the you know go searching on the internet find two or three or four people that you resonate with and then do the 15 minute 30 minute call with them and pick one you like you know yeah. that's that's absolutely vitally important that connection with the coach client relationship and the client the, a good coach will also say to a client I don't think you're a good fit for me if they're not feeling it and they'll recommend someone else and I've done that and I've had people do that um, for me as well and that's why our coaching networks are so vitally important that we can do that referral mm -hmm. and, and that cross fertilization for the right fit which is really good for sure yeah so Mira if I had to ask you what's one lesson that your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life what would that be oh so I had so many uh <laughs> so many I wanted to share but the one that landed was around change and around this notion that um, life happens to us. Because if I touch on, you know, at the pinnacle and the, the real breaking point of my separation, I was in the place of what, why is this happening to me? You know, and when we're in this place of why is this happening to me? Life is happening to me. This isn't fair. 
we are sitting in a space where we're actually going to not really be able to take much action. So it's recognized, right, recognizing that life is a massive game of change. Change is occurring all the time. Um, some of the changes we uh, bring about, so we might decide we want to start exercising. So that's a change that we create. However, life is changing constantly. And I, I, I remind us of the year of 2020 and 2021, probably <laughs> the most global epic set of changes that occurred. So if we, if we take the approach that life is happening to us, we are in this state of victimhood and it's not to, you know, discredit the impacts that, you know, because some people do have big impacts on our lives. However, it's, it's in order to shift that and in order to really truly move forward and move out of a difficult change that occurs, we need to make that change to, okay, rather than this is happening to me, what can I do now? How can I respond to this? It's happened. How can I see in this that this is happening for me? And in the space of five years, a very, very messy end to my marriage and the end to the family that I so deeply wanted as a child, you know, the family unit of the mum, the dad and the children. You know, I... I, in five years, am now in work that truly fulfills me. You know, my parenting is has changed dramatically. Um, and look, parenting, you never get it fully right, but I know that it's improved along the way. Yeah. And, you know, this, that, ha that could only occur for me to have made the decision to not let that situation impact me and that I would look at what this in, in situation was providing me. So that that is the one that I want to share. It's not life happens to us, but life happens for us. And how can we respond to the change or the event um, in order for us to make something of it? Yeah. And I think it's important that life is full of emotions right and some of them make us feel better than others but we still need to feel and experience those negative i don't like calling them negative emotions those emotions that don't make us feel great right so that hurt that anger that shame that guilt all of those emotions they're there for a reason and we need to feel like and work through them and for me as a coach it's helping people be able to sit and feel but not stuck in those emotions. Yeah. Because they're very yeah. valid emotions. And if we try to push them down, they'll just erupt like a volcano at some point in the future. So if we can process them in, in the situation that we're going through, and it might take, you know, days, weeks, months to, to process it, but knowing that we will come out the other side and that's where the coach can help you with mm -hmm. that process your emotions feel it you've got to feel it to heal it right yeah and yeah. then but what can we do with that now that we've felt it and we've acknowledged that that was a pretty awful time what now that's happened and i felt yes. bad and awful about it yeah what, what now for the future so uh thank you for sharing that because i know that when you spoke about the end of your marriage and you said, you know, sometime later you did interior design and then you did coaching and, and now look where you are. So, yeah. We, yeah. I, I just wanted to um, add on to, in terms of the conversation around emotions, because that's actually a key um, thing that I talk about with clients as well. And I want to give a real example of this in terms of coming back to the point we make around when we struggle, so do our children. So, I look back and see the times where I have been incredibly emotional and needed to be. They're very relevant, you know, things that I needed to process with the end of my marriage. Lots of different grief, lots of anger, um, hurt. And there is a difference between when I was trying to hold it back. And in those first six to 12 months, I was really trying to hold it back because I didn't want my children to see me struggling. And yet I was struggling. 
Yeah. And I actually disconnected from them as a result of that. And they actually had less of me because I was trying to suppress and hold back a whole lot of emotion that I didn't feel that I could really sit with. And one, because it was really hard. Sitting in messy emotions is hard. Yeah. But two, yeah. there was this, this idea that I could not show up like that to my children. And yet I was showing up with it all over me, the energy in the space um, to you know, fast forward where now when I feel uh, one of these emotions, I allow myself the space to feel it and move it through my body. And I also teach that to my children. So rather than the message to them that they don't get to feel those big emotions and that they have to suppress them, I create the space for them to feel it and for them to move through those emotions. And I feel like that's such an important lesson that I'm carrying over for my children because for many of us as adults in, I think, in these generations now, we are the byproduct of childhood that told us to be quiet, to calm down, to stop yelling, don't be angry, don't act like that, you're being upset. Um, and, you know, that, that all emotions, as you touched on, are actually necessary. And yet we've been brought up with this conditioning that certain emotions are not to be felt and you put them away. And so when I touch on as if we struggle, so do our children, that's my example of that. I was struggling and I didn't have the support uh, or the tools to help me through that. And my children struggled as well. Their behaviour was a lot more heightened because they were dealing with heightened emotions that they couldn't really understand either. So yeah. that's my biggest why in, in why I do what I do is helping women and mothers particularly through that phase, not just for them, for them 100% first and foremost, but also for possibly the children that they have or the children that they'll have forward going forward. Yeah. And, and even if they don't have children, um, there will be others in their lives that they're giving to. So they'll, they'll show up better for those that are close to them whether it's their children yeah. or whether it's other people, but those that are close to them and being able to give um, in that situation as well. Mm. So you've touched on your experience, which is so, so you've been so open, which has been fantastic, and that helps your clients. So what feedback have you received or what is the best feedback you've received from a client or what is the most memorable change that you've helped a client to make? Yeah. But Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I'll try and make this really brief, but one of um, I had a particular client that first reached out to me about attending a women's circle. And she reached out online and she very openly shared that she'd just come out of an incredibly difficult relationship. Um, and uh, it was not working because of that that um, challenge and had really withdrawn from life. Um she was incredibly anxious at the time. She really struggled to um, put herself in social settings um, and had really withdrawn. She was incredibly numb in life. Uh, and so she'd reached out online. We'd begun a conversation through messages and I kept encouraging her, you know, without any pressure to come when she felt ready. And look, she started out with doing an online program with me um, within the next couple of months and then eventually started one-on-one -on -one coaching and it was through the online program the one-on-one -on -one coaching that then she um, the change in her was incredible um, she she's ended up attending multiple circles the following year she's attended our women in business brunch that I run um, she she describes the biggest takeaways for her is she truly has her confidence back um, to be who she is as a person. She'd really felt that the end of that relationship, um, particularly because it had been quite an impacting relationship, she had complete lost trust in her sense of self. She'd lost trust in her judgment of people because she found herself in, in quite a horrible relationship. Um, and 
trusting in, her, in herself, it sounds, in, you know, a bit broad, but that was one of the massive things that she gained. And she was in that state where she hadn't worked for 12 months. She was wondering what to do next. And in trusting in herself and in having that confidence back, she made the decision to actually start her own business and pursue something that she is so incredibly talented at, which is writing. And she has had all these little wins since coaching that she keeps sharing with me where she's, you know, had done grant writing and managed to get, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of grants for certain people that she's written for. She's, you know, writing um, website copy. She's writing um, uh, resumes um, for people. So she is now using what her innate gift is, which is words and writing, and she's creating a business in it. So, you know, she didn't come to me for that. She came to me to help her heal from that past relationship. But the flow and effect of what she's gone on to do and how she's re-blossomed back in life and, and now living life and not withdrawn and, um, you know, has the confidence to put herself out there again is just... I don't know. I've given a lot of words to it, but it's a feeling. Yeah. It's yeah. an amazing feeling. When when you see your clients, their spark and their brightness start to shine again, uh, particularly when they've been through traumatic events, and I've had some clients that have come to me for one thing, and then uh, when we talk about something, they open up and then they share a really traumatic event from their past and, and yeah. you know, we are here to hold space, right? So they can open up and share whatever they want with us. And then through us helping them and, and holding space and asking the right questions and allowing them to navigate through that, we can't change the past, but what we can do is help them look back on it differently. And to see them shine, shine their light is just so amazing. And it's such a great feeling as a coach to, to do that. And when they, when they share their little wins, like just small, small steps that then all build up, build up, build up. And then they're living a life that is truly them and it's right for yeah. them. And it's such an amazing yeah. approach. And, and to see them blossom and grow and, and just slowly that flower to open up is just so, mm -hmm. such a fulfilling thing. And that's why I love what I do and you love what you do is because we can help. Absolutely. And it's the ripple effect. You know, I, I help her. She steps into her genius as a writer and she then helps others. Yeah. And, you know, she isn't a, she's not a mother, she's not a biological mother, but she has nieces and nephews and, you know, and her, what she's overcome for herself, that flows out to, you know, the people that she then goes on to help with her writing, you know, and her friends and her family. So we, the impact of, of what we can do in coaching does really have this ripple effect. And again, I, I particularly as women, because as women, we are the nurturers, we are the life bringing bodies of, of, you know, humanity. And so the impact that we have when we really do invest in ourselves, when we do the self care, prioritize our needs and do the healing that we might need to do because of some past events that ripple effect is is far reaching absolutely absolutely and it's so lovely to to see that in out in the community that that flow on effect so our podcast is about uh confidence and we've spoken a lot about that today so in one sentence what's the best advice or a tip that you could give to someone who either doesn't have clarity because coaching is about helping them gain clarity they might be facing a setback at the moment or struggling with something or they might be right in the midst of, of a traumatic event or a separation or a breakup or some other life-changing event what's a piece of advice you could give them this too will pass yes nothing is permanent and as i touched on earlier life is one big experience of change you know we are constantly changing as people you know i'm not the version of me that i was six months ago, let alone three years ago, and neither are you. Um, so when you know that really deeply and you can, I guess, embrace it and roll with it as opposed to resist. Yeah. 
accept that change is a part of life. It's when you sign up for life, you sign up for change. And, um, you know, each change that you go through that you either create yourself or that life presents for you as an opportunity to rumble with change a bit more, build more resistance and to make something out of the change that occurs. Yeah, resistance or resilience? Did I say resistance? Yeah. yeah <laughs> well, more resilience. I, guess the, I, I guess the thing is we we can res, resist change. Hmm. You know, we can we can change can be upon us and we can kind of fight it and, and resist it, or we can surrender to it and roll with wherever it takes us. That's the two or the difference for me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's exactly right. We we can, and again, resisting it is pushing it away and pushing it down and suppressing, and then the volcano happens later in life. Um, so ro rolling with it and feeling the emotions that, that are messy, those messy yeah. emotions, that, yeah. but to process it, you know, and, and process it allows us to then heal from it rather than mm -hmm. pushing it down, you know, with pushing it down and pushing it down and pushing it down, then all of a sudden one tiny little thing happens and we explode. And if yeah. I was like, oh, where did that come from? Well, it came from yeah. me suppressing it. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And look, maybe if I give an example, um, you know, and this is possibly one that others can resonate with, you know, when um, when we was, we had a se our separation and he, those first six months, I was resisting it. You know, I was fighting for us to stay together. You know, we, my ex-husband had made this really clear decision that he didn't think the relationship was was going to go forward but I found that I started fighting for the family fighting for the relationship and the moment and that was me resisting the change that was happening the change the, the ship had sailed there was no amount of anything that I would do to change someone's opinion right we can't change people's minds he he'd made his decision and the moment I stopped resisting it and fighting it and I guess, hating on my experience. And I actually shifted that and went, okay, this is happening. What is this opportunity providing me? Yeah. You know, where, what, where this space that's been created, what can I bring into that space now? And study was part of that. Living in Brisbane was part of that. You know, we lived in Brisbane for 12 months afterwards. Um, so that was me resisting and then changing to surrendering. And so much of life happened when I made that shift. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's what you went through is very normal. Um, yeah. and, and most people would approach it in that way as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is why I share it to show what's possible, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You've shared so many wonderful things with us today. So where can people find you? How can they connect in with you? Where are you at? Okay. So um, Instagram, which is mirror, M-I-R-A dot Claudia dot A-U um, is probably the best place. Um, I've got my website, mirrorclaudia.com, and then I'm mirror Claudia on Facebook as well. Um, send me a DM. I'm such an open book, um, as I've shared today. Um, and I've spent a many a time just talking to different people through DMs. Um, you know, they've seen something I've shared and, you know, wanted to share part of their experience. So, uh, I'm very happy to, to chat via DMs, um, as a starting point. Um, right. and yeah, that's the places. Lovely. All righty. And, uh, your programs and your offerings are all on your website. Yeah, on the website, they're on the link trees, which you can get to via um, mirror, via Instagram and Facebook as well. So I have um, the Her Tribe events and then I run um, programs under my coaching um, umbrella and one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Fantastic. Thanks again for spending time with us today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Helen. Thanks.